Welcome to Real Physics. This is the optimal place to talk about the gravitational constant because I think it's a tiny little bit smaller than on sea level and I'm on top of a mountain. So I'm not talking about the theory of the gravitational constant of which I have made a lot of videos. Today I talk about the experiments and the experimental side is also very interesting. To begin with, Isaac Newton, after whom the constant is named, didn't believe that the gravitational constant could ever be measured. So it took something like a century until a very ingenious guy, John Mitchell, invented the principle that was then realized by Cavendish and published in 1798 under the funny title A Measurement of the Mean Density of the Earth, but it was actually a measurement of the gravitational constant. He put masses together. Actually, there was a bar with two masses and another mass nearby. Then you had this bar suspended on a fiber. I described this experiment in this video. It's very, very difficult, but very ingenious. So it's used to this day, but you have to do it very carefully. So the torsion balance experiment delivered the best values. So the story is kind of boring until 1982. Back then, a group, I think Luther and Tauler, published a very precise result. I think it was like 6.672642. Too many digits. So turned out that the precision was not real, but people back then didn't realize, they did realize it when in 1995, the Physikalische Technische Bundesanstalt very courageously published a value which was far off, like 6.7 something. That was clearly wrong. They had another systematic error, but then they discovered this systematic error, a wrong gauge of the fiber, and they had to redo the 1982 experiment. All this sparked tremendous interest. There were like 10 groups measuring the gravitational constant with different methods. I'd been to a very nice conference in 2002 and, and there was one group with the same principle, just an electronic version of the torsion balance, very precise, and another competing group from France also with the torsion balance. And there was also a guy measuring the gravitational constant with the water in an artificial lake that was sometimes filled and sometimes not, and depending on the water level. There was a different local gravity, which was measured with a superconducting gravimeter. These gravimeters provide fantastic measurements. There are people putting masses close to gravimeter and then removing it and then making the calculations. One guy even drilled a hole in the Greenland ice cap and put the gravimeter and then I think some 2000 meters below they detected an interesting anomaly. Another guy detected another anomaly by performing the same experiment at the bottom of the ocean. So there is a variety of interesting measurements. Also the atomic beam technique was used more recently. However, that precise value was never reached again. And so we have the funny situation that the official data now is less precise than 30 or 40 years ago because the measurement is actually very difficult, very prone to experimental error. However, these gravimeters, these superconducting gravimeters are fantastic instruments because there is also a net of these machines spread all over the world. I myself did also an analysis of this. You can't measure the absolute value of local gravity, but what you can see is the change of local gravity. So we have to subtract all the disturbing signals like the tides of the moon, of the sun, the air pressure, something which is called ocean loading. If the tide is high, then you have influence on the Earth's crust. You have to correct for the temperature, for the moisture in the Earth. It's really a mess. And after all this, you arrive at the signal of the polar motion because the Earth is wobbling around, around its axis of rotation. So with all this, I also tried to find an anomaly, but I wasn't successful. I'd like to repeat the measurement one day. Maybe artificial intelligence can help because basically I'm a lazy person. Yeah, the story of the gravitational constant is also very interesting from that experimental point of view. Clearly, there are a lot of people claiming that there are anomalies here and there supporting exotic theories. I don't 
buy this it could be it could not be it's just very difficult and not solved to this day if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like it and if you're interested in fundamental physics subscribe to this channel